Hello, I'm Mary Ann Fitzpatrick, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and Associate Vice President for Special Academic Initiatives at the University of South Carolina. The SIMS Initiative is a digital humanities project of our university libraries, funded in part with a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of Sims' ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it's part of the author's short story collection called The Wigwam and the Cabin. Our tale has taken us through the woods and swamps of South Carolina and to the docks and downtown areas of Charleston. But the question still lingers whether James Grayling actually saw a ghost. The narrator's grandmother says absolutely, but his father has a different take. And now let's conclude our tale with part 22 of William Gilmore Sims Grayling or Murder Will Out. Ah, exclaimed the old lady, my grandmother, it's hard to make you believe anything you don't see. You're like St. Thomas in the scriptures. But how do you propose to account for his knowing that the Scotchman was on board the Falmouth packet? Answer to that. This is not a more difficult matter than any of the rest. You forget that in the dialogue which took place between James and Major Spencer at the camp, the latter told him that he was about to take passage for Europe in the Falmouth packet, which then lay in Charleston Harbor and was about to sail. McNabb heard all that. True enough and likely enough, returned the old lady. But though you show that it was Major Spencer's intention to go to Europe in the Falmouth packet, that will not show that it was also the intention of the murderer. Yet more probable, and how natural for James Grayling to imagine such a thing. In the first place, he knew that McNabb was a Briton. He felt convinced he was a Tory, and the inference was immediate that such a person would scarcely have remained long in a country where such characters labored under so much odium, disenfranchisement, and constant danger from popular tumults. The fact that McNabb was compelled to disguise his true sentiments and affect those of the people against whom he fought so vindictively shows that his sense of danger was incurred. Now, it is not unlikely that McNabb was quite as well aware that the Falmouth packet was in Charleston and about to sail as was Major Spencer. No doubt he was pursuing the same journey with the same object, and had he not murdered Spencer, they would very likely have been fellow passengers together to Europe. But whether he knew the fact before or not, he probably heard it stated by Spencer while he seemed to be sleeping. And even supposing that he did not then know, it was enough that he found this to be the fact on reaching the city. It was an afterthought to fly to Europe with his ill-gotten spoils, and whatever may have appeared a politic course to the criminal would be a probable conjecture in the mind of him by whom he was suspected. The whole story is one of strong probabilities which happened to be verified, and if proving anything proves only that which we know that James Grayling was a man of remarkably sagacious judgment and quick, daring imagination. This quality of imagination, by the way, when possessed very strongly in connection with crude common sense and well-balanced general faculties, makes that particular kind of intellect which, because of its promptness and powers of creation and combination, we call genius. It is genius only which can make ghosts, and James Grayling was a genius. He never, my son, saw any other ghosts than those of his own making. I heard my father with great patience to the end, 
though he seemed very tedious. He had taken a great deal of pains to destroy one of my greatest sources of pleasure. I need not add that I continued to believe in the ghost and with my grandmother to reject the philosophy. It is more easy to believe the one than to comprehend the other. This has been part 22 and the conclusion of William Gilmore Sims Grayling or Murder Will Out. I hope you have enjoyed our reading of this ghostly tale. For the full text of this story and many other works by the antebellum Charleston writer William Gilmore Sims, please visit our website at sims.library.sc.edu. From all of us at the Sims Initiatives and the University of South Carolina, have a very happy Halloween.